Um, yeah, so sort of throughout the first question for, from our side, which was how are customers going to be deploying this database? So as I said in one of the issues, uh, our focus right now is getting the deployment and the migration done for gitlab.com first. And only then we are going to officially release the, the new registry for self-managed customers. And uh, that's because uh, running the, the two efforts in parallel, uh, doing the gitlab.com migration and supporting uh, self-managed customers to do the same kind of process as well is just too much to, to run in parallel. Um, and because gitlab.com has the highest priority, so that's why we are focusing first on gitlab.com and then on self-managed customers. But uh, judging from previous conversations that we had, um, and while for gitlab.com we are going to use a, a separate database and a separate uh, cluster for the registry due to scale, performance, and isolation concerns, for self-managed customers, it, it should be fine uh, for most of them to have the registry database as a separate database inside the same Postgres instance that the Rails database lives. And I think we, we already do that for uh, Gitali Prefect and also for the Mattermost, if I'm not wrong. Um, so I think that could be the default. And uh, nevertheless, if any of them want to uh, use a separate cluster, they can always configure the registry to, to connect to that. But as a default, I think it would be sensible to keep it within the same instance. Thank you. Uh, if you don't mind, I would like to expand on, on the question more than on the answer because I raised this up in our meeting. So the reason why I asked this was not about how we want to support our customer, but it's more about if we, so we have a problem with the current deployment, the gitlab.com deployment as a whole, that basically we are not dog fooding the deployment process and we are running migrations in, um, in a special way on a deploy host, in a special machine, because we have to keep in sync VMs, Kubernetes, a lot of things uh, that are moving at the same time. So what I'm thinking here is that we have the unique opportunity to start dog footing the migration process since day one, which doesn't mean that we release the migration process as general available for our customer, but that instead of uh, implementing this in uh, our pipeline first and then changing it to, I'm talking about CNG images, right? Because, sorry, uh, the Helm chart, sorry, because this will run in Kubernetes. So, if we could do the effort only once, which is let's make this into the charts. It doesn't have to be, what I'm thinking is, it doesn't have to cover all the uh, configuration options, just what we need for, for running this for, on our for stuff. Then what we get out of this is that we start dog footing the migration process on gitlab.com since day one, and we don't have to rework the pipeline because right now, all of our Kubernetes pipeline do not handle this type of situation. They have no um, understanding of database or things like that because this happens outside of our Kubernetes pipeline. So that's, that's the reason why I was asking if it's possible to start with, um, with the charts first, basically. From the registry side, yeah, I, I think that would make sense and shouldn't be a problem for us. Uh, we are already shipping uh, the version of the registry which has support for the database um, currently, but it's just uh, turned off by default and it will continue to be so uh, for a bit longer. Um, so we can just turn that on internally and leave it as defaults off on, on the charts uh, if that's feasible and, and, and go that way. Uh, I don't know about the, the work done on charts or not. It, it should require some, some effort there. Um, from the aspect of, of the charts and how this is going to work out, I know that we're prioritizing GitLab.com, but I need to know people are planning ahead to have a clear map of what the process is going to look like for people that have already had a traditional registry in play for years. And though it's not to our scale, not to our volume, 
have a clean and methodical method to transit from the traditional to the database because we can implement this for us. We have a large team, very capable SREs and infrastructure team. Customers don't. Can't we separate that in two problems? So before we are able to do the migration and all of that, we will have to have support to deploy the registry with the database uh, using charts. So can't we tackle that first, which is, looks like it's what we need for gitlab.com and then think about how it's going to do the migration for, for self-managed customers, because it, it looks like we can separate those, um, at least looks like. Right. And I understand that addressment. I'm asking that we think ahead. I'm not saying that we do ahead. I'm asking that we think ahead. I need, I need to be able to plan because I have to push this on the users. Okay, that's all I'm trying to put out there. I'm, I know that we're going to be doing things in the charts to make it work for .com. I know that we're going to have to deal with the fact that there's going to be some user out there who goes, oh, database, and turns the knob. Because we can't hide knobs from users in our open source. And I already know of users who are turning knobs they shouldn't, despite our warnings about do not do this in production. Uh, and I have support tickets about it. I just need to make sure that while we're doing this work, while we're planning on how to support the database in the container, in the charts, in our production, that we understand that we may have side impact. It's not Jason. perfectly clean. I apologize. I'm, let me just finish the sentence. It's not a perfectly clean break. I am perfectly fine with going forward as we're currently planning. I'm only asking that keep in mind. Yeah, uh, thanks for that, Jason. I think that's a really good thing to be thinking about is how this will um, be uh, looked at to people who can see the change before it's like technically available and thinking about how it'll impact people. What would you expect? What are you looking for? Are you, because you said the plan ahead, um, or think ahead, but not necessarily do ahead, right? So are you looking for a, here's how to do this from a self-hosted customer level? Are you looking for documentation? Like, what are you actually wanting here? From, from my perspective, because we have to automate the upgrade paths, whether or not we're using database migrations or how to migrate the data itself, we have to like in 4.0 X, you have this in 5.0 X, now this thing exists and everybody has to transition, right? All I'm looking for is the model and expected path, the flow chart of how things are going to work in a clear fashion. From that, I can extrapolate a lot of information and users can know this is what we can expect and they know that that will get refined in the future. Jason, Jason, we have a import utility um, that's general. It's not um, only for the GitLab.com case. We have something that can do it in place. So if you have the um, a bucket or a file system or anything, it can go over that data and um, import it in place and then do a full registry import and then have the database uh, take care of uh, cleaning that data and managing it. And it doesn't need to be um, this thing where we're moving to a fresh bucket and it's, and it's um, it doesn't necessarily have to be so um, precise and fussy as the dot-com migration, just because we anticipate the data set being smaller, the ability to have downtime and perhaps a local file system, which is just gonna be faster. Is that um, address some of your concerns? That may address my concerns. I This is the first time I've heard of it, so please point me to it. Um, I will point out that there's no such thing as a local file system in Cloud Native. So I, we have to make sure that it's going to work in that fashion. That's all. And I, I'd love to preemptively test this for you. We will likely need more than one plan uh, because it, it, depending on the on the size of the registry and which storage provider the customers are using, uh, the same receipt will not work in the same way for everyone. And it's possible that uh, in some cases it's not possible to automate everything. So 
for example, right now, we also don't automate when people want to move from file system to S3. We have a documentation for that um, where we direct people uh, to use tools like the AWS CLI to move the data. And then they have to put the registry in real only mode, reconfigure uh, Omnibus. Um, so it's possible that uh, for big registries, we won't be able to do it in one sweep, right? in just one turn that we could uh, just automate as part of the, of the deployment. Um, so it, it, it's not something, something that we can figure it out and something that will work for everyone. And at the same time, for the most complex part, which are the really big registries, right now we don't have the experience of how that is going to work because we haven't done one yet. And we are about to, to do the, the biggest one, which is gitlab.com. And we expect to learn from that as well. And whatever works for gitlab.com will also work for uh, any of our self-managed customers as well. Uh, but we also have to go through that process uh, to make sure that our expectations uh, can, can be a reality. Okay. And, and I apologize if I've just not fully read on the issue. Are those expectations well documented already? For gitlab.com, yes, they are. And for small registries, uh, those that can be migrated with a single uh, operation, it's also documented. It's the ones in the middle uh, between the really small and the, the huge ones like gitlab.com that are not yet documented. I have, um, I think that the, the conversation here get a bit on, um, say, on a path that is far away. And maybe I apologize because I, I brought the migrations in the context, but I should have specified I was talking about uh, data, applying database migration. So I'm talking about what I was talking about is running, uh, a, there's, a, there's a utility in the registry, which I think is registry migrate up, something like this. And so, uh, so this is that basically is a direct question to Jason, I think, which is uh, we are not using um, Rails migration on charts. So as delivery team, we have no experience with that part of the chart. What I'm asking here is that if the um, registry migration could be, so that not database migration, not data migration. So database migration could be part of the chart and handle it by Helm in themselves so they can run pre-deployment migration, update the um, service definition, run, and when everything is running the new version, schedule another one of job that runs the post-deployment migration. Because looking at the documentation, there's also post-deployment migration. So this is my more direct and specific question. Yes. While .com is not currently making use of them because there is a hybrid scenario, and you need to control the migrations of the database from outside because that's where everything is. The charts themselves, when run in, I'll say isolation or purely cloud native fashion, there is one, a container that is the administrative interface. Through that, you have the ability to run the migrations by hand, post, pre, whatever. And by default for most users, they're actually using the Helm chart and there is a job that is scheduled at the beginning of a deployment that actually runs all of the migrations in a container. So it updates all the database and then restarts all of the services that are affected by that. With the operator work, what we're doing is separating out pre and post migrations so that when the operator is in use, those migrations to the data, the Rails migrations, the registries, database migrations, Will all run as pre-ops and then the affected services will be rolled and then the post migrations will be ran and then any remaining affected services will be restarted. So if I understood correctly the answer is the answer to my question is not yet because if we are using only pre-deployment migration to the regular one it can work today because when we upgrade with Helm we do the new we what we are going to do is, is not updating the chart, but just version bumping the, the image of the registry. That's our scenario right now. It, it will not 
run the migration first, then upgrade the machine. And in any case, even if it can do this, it will not run post-deployment migration at the end because we are not running the operator. Right. So if all you're doing, if you're not updating the version in the chart and you're literally just bumping the image for the registry binary, yes. Like there's nothing the chart can do if it doesn't know what to do. And that's generally handled by the versioning behaviors. We know that when you're doing this, you need to run this set of migrations, right? And we can only know that if we know the version of the registry that is in play. So that's a particular instance that could be a bit of a hiccup. It can be worked around. Um, and effectively that results in making sure that the migrations job that we run when you deploy the charts knows that it, about the, the database that needs to be done for the registry itself. Well, the reason why I'm asking this is that here we are discussing if it's possible with the registry to give them something as closer as possible to continuous delivery, which means that in best case, yeah, absolutely best case, we could have something like that their master pipeline at the end when they have built also the image or whatever, they just trigger its workload say oh this new image is ready so please deploy me on staging the new version which i can't see or i can't think right now of doing this through the chart so that every satellite component will trigger a new chart build so that the charts knows that there is something to upgrade in terms of migration and things like that so in our idea as delivery team was more something like we have this our clusters and we just change the version of the images and when we are ready to bundle the, the release for our customer we take a snapshot so whatever was running on that date we know that is uh, stable that works so at that point in time we say hello charts this is the new set of versions for every component and this is gitlab 12 dot something 13 15 whatever that that's what we are thinking about. So I, I, I'm asking about this because we may end up in invent, reinventing the wheel twice, but if we can avoid this, it would be better. Okay, then there's, there's something I want to point out, which is how the Rails-based systems in the CNG work versus how the registry currently works. The current methodology for configuring the registry assumes that all state is within the bucket itself. Right? There's no database involved in it. Within Rails, we know there's a database and we know that the database has a schema and we know by version of the code base that something has to happen or it won't even start the application, right? If the code is newer than the data schema, we won't even start it. If the schema is newer than the application, we'll start it, okay? We basically need to implement a similar behavior to the registry that says, I can't start this because my database isn't up to par. We have a pattern for this, and we just need to get that into play. The registry already supports that, so it won't start if uh, if, it, if the database, database is lagging behind, but it will start if it is uh, forward. Because we uh, struggle to keep migrations um, compatible in that way as well. Okay, so the, the one question I have is, in terms of that implementation, it won't start unless its schema is up to date, which is good. Thank you for doing that. But what happens if an old version is running and the schema gets updated? If an old version is running and, and the schema is updated while it is running, well, we try to keep to keep uh, migrations compatible uh, with the old code. And, and if it's not possible for some reason, we have to go to, to a full stop. Right before before uh, applying migrations and getting everything up and running again, uh, but until now uh, it should be fine. Okay, I'm just that's just a learning point. I want to make sure everybody is aware of is we have to be careful of that kind of behavior. Is we need to make sure that we're rolling forward, similar to what we do within within Rails. We specifically have non-breaking migrations for a good reason. So it just point to be aware of. Now, I do question, are those migrations built into the registry binary? What performs those migrations? Yeah. And how do so, I know what version to expect? 
So uh, we have a CLI as part of the registry binary. Uh, migration files are embedded in the binary as well. Uh, and it works similar uh, of how it works right now for Gitali, Prefect, we use a similar tool. So uh, that is a doc uh, linked in the, in the agenda and uh, it will show you all of the commands that exist to manage database migrations up, down and uh, seeing the status and the version. So if you have a look at that, it's probably easier than going through every one of them. Uh, but yeah, you, you can either pull the source code uh, build the registry and run it from there, or just use the, the Docker image for the registry and override the, the command, uh, which by default is serve to start the API. Uh, but if you override that and you pass the database migrate command, you can apply migrations using the, the Docker image. Okay. Yep. I'm, I'm seeing this now and we'll have to integrate this into the CNG carefully. It's doable. And it's still reading, but primarily very thorough, which I definitely appreciate. So in terms of, um, so that sounds like the kind of overall like um, preferred approach, right? Um, in terms of the um, next steps for this stuff, then, like, do we do we need to let you have some reading time, Jason, and then uh, see how this integrates, or what what should happen next? We're going to need some reading time and some engineering time to to play with this um, to figure out how we can manage to do this just at the, the cloud native scale. Um, and whether we need to integrate this directly into the migrations job or into a container that can then run it and how to apply these things and how to make this available from the task runner uh, to have that application interface. There's a, a number of things that we're going to have to go through engineering wise. Um, so I think we can move on to further concerns. So I suppose the other side of this is we have the new QA tests coming. Um, Jav, do you have um, a sense at the moment, like, are we in a position where we could add in the new QA tests into the existing pipelines and get those up and running um, so we can we can have those now? I haven't looked into the QA tests. Uh, are they, I mean, I, I, I don't know anything about the QA tests. So I'll say that. <laughs> are they part of like the QA, the existing QA test suite? Like, are they part of smoke tests? Are they something separate? Uh, who here is from QA that could talk about this? Anyone? Yeah, we haven't Maybe. got a QA person. I think that's okay. uh, like, so So as I understand it, uh, there are no QA tests running on the registry pipeline at the moment. So I believe they are totally new, but I can dig out the issue. But do we think from, say from a pipeline point of view, like are we would, do we have what we need to be able to incorporate a QA test job. Yeah, we already we already run regular QA against staging. We run QA smoke tests against staging after we deploy to the staging environment. If we just add, if there are registry QA tests, we could just add that to the existing smoke test suite, and that's that's it. I mean, I think that's a pretty simple change. Um, or we can add a separate. We, we currently trigger the QA pipeline from our Kubernetes pipeline. So if there is another, like if the QA uh, team has another QA job that they want us to trigger, we can do that. Uh, I think we have the flexibility to do whatever we need to do. Great, that sounds good. That's definitely a good step, first step for us um, to get those in. Uh, is Raul linked to the, the uh, issue for the QA test in the document, everyone? Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, about that, Thank just you. one thing. Uh, Sophia is out today. Uh, she's working on this test. She's out today, so she's not here. Uh, but one thing that uh, she said in, in, the, in the last update on that issue is that for the QA test, we are currently using Omnibus to run those. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we were not thinking about adding the metadata database to Omnibus, 
uh, and you are ready to support self-managed customers. That means that uh, we won't be able to use those to test uh, the registry with the database in it because that would require us to integrate that functionality in Omnibus. And apparently from, from what she said here, I, I didn't reply back yet, it would be possible to do some QA tests in staging if we run the registry with the database enabled in staging, which is something that we want to do. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I wonder if that would be feasible uh, for delivery as well to integrate those um, into the pipeline. Because the, the current ones that uh, she just created, are, I believe, are, are on in the environment that uses Omnibus, but those only test the, the generic functionality of the registry without the database. So it's the first step. Okay. Yeah, this is the development QA, which happens before the, say, delivery team concerns. Because basically, I think it's the same um, Docker image, but I'm not sure that can be di directed throughout an existing instance instead of building everything from Omnibus, running everything and testing in, in the same image. So what we are doing here is that those tests run targeting a real environment. And this is part of our uh, deployment pipeline. So say at the end of uh, staging deployment, before we can promote to Canary, we have a subset of our QA, which we refer them as smoke tests and they must be green. So we trigger a pipeline. This pipeline is running tests toward real instance. And only if it's green, then we promote. And same for Canary. And aside from that, there are regular Chrome jobs that keeps testing those smoke tests, targeting distances, regardless of uh, deployment. So if those tests can be coded there, maybe they would not be part of the um, QA from Omnibus, but they will still be part of the QA that we can run in the real instances. Jeff, do you know if we run those also on pre-prod or other environments? Yes, we run it on pre-prod staging and production. Uh, they're triggered from the deployer pipeline after we deploy to staging, after we deploy to the Canary, we do tests against Canary, and we also run these periodically on a schedule. Just the smoke. Well, yeah, and we run the full test suite on a schedule uh, as well as the smoke test. Cool. Um, is that it for QA? If so, yeah, uh, so. the next item is Alessio's uh, leaking pipe. Do you have anything, any update on that, Alessio? I think you saw the contractor passing by a couple of times. So they are fixing okay. the wall outside. <laughs> no more leaking. <laughs> Cool. Uh, for my, I, I had a sync with Scarback. I think um, my understanding is that the registry development team really wants to get started testing on pre-prod as soon as possible and hopefully testing on staging. After our last, after the previous conversation here about getting the migrations into charts and we're discussing about like how we can unblock them to get migrations working in pre-prod. We need to get the database created in pre-prod. Henry's working on that. Um, Henry, do you have any update on on the infrastructure, or, or is this something that you're not working on? Uh, I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, the problem is I'm currently blocked by a Terraform issue with our Cloud SQL module, because it's creating a conflicting uh, resource. That should be the case. I'm still looking into that. It seems to be more tricky than I first thought. The good side is there's not much to do once this is working to get Cloud SQL working and put the credentials out and maybe add uh, all developers to the um, pre DB console node to have access to the node. Um, but this needs okay. to be looked at and I'm on it. So maybe I need to reach out to get a second pair of eyes if I can't get forward with that one, but I plan to finish this this week. Okay, yeah, I interpreted this as it's gonna happen soon. So we're looking at maybe next week having the database infrastructure set up for pre-prod. The next problem is having migrations completed. Um, Jason, uh, we are thinking like maybe we can just run a one-off job to do the migrations. Um, another option or another hack I was thinking of until we have like official charts support for migrations or until we figure this out, what would you think of an environment variable that would just run migrations on startup uh, for the registry that would be kind of a developer only thing that would just allow us to kind of, because you know migrations are idempotent, um, it would, it's ridiculous to have migrations run on every start of the registry, but this would unblock us 
in pre-prod uh, just to get testing done. Do you, do you have any objection to this or what do you think? So there's two things to point out. One, we do actually have precedent of something like this happening already where it automatically runs database migrations at start. Prefect does this. Yeah. That being said, Prefect is rarely more than three nodes. By yeah. nodes, I mean instances. The problem is with the scale of the registry for GitLab.com and the number of pods that are running at a given yeah. time, if you restart four at a time and they all try to run migrations, you have a problem. I, I don't want to do this for prod. The same time. <laughs> right. I don't Can we use I wanna... class leader it's election directly from not. Kubernetes? I'm telling you the implications. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So a one-off job that you add into the deployment that everything fires up, you re-roll the deployment and you trigger that job or you trigger that job ahead of time and then run all of the new pods. That's effectively what we do now with the Rails application is we, we fire yes. off a job that does the migrations and then we restart all of the pods because there can be anywhere between two and a hundred of them. I guess I guess that's that's fine. Um, we can do that. It just seems like we're not sure where what the end state is going to look like. So I was thinking like maybe three lines of shell to the start script with an experimental environment variable that just runs migrations on start would be enough to like get us going on Monday. Uh, I assume like this is super urgent that we get this on pre-prod as soon as possible to unblock development, and that would be like the quickest way to get there. The quickest way to get there is a one-off job that runs the migrate command. Okay, so yeah, so we can we can do that as well. Um, I, I can I, even work on making said automated job for you, but it's the quickest and most correct way. Because again, <laughs> even in yeah. small instances, if more than one tries to run at the same time, that's a problem. Prefect, this actually never occurs because we're using a stateful set with a minimum of one. So when yeah. you run two or three prefects, only one will get restarted at a time. When you yeah. restart the registry, you go, hey, everybody, boom. Yeah, we, we're, we're going to probably just run one pod, you know, in pre-prod. I mean, that's, it's, it's going to be a very small thing. So there wouldn't be an issue there, but. Um, Do it right. Okay. So. Jason. Um, sorry, go, go ahead, sorry. Go, go ahead, Alessio, go ahead. Now, if I remember correctly, as part of the ATCD implementation ship with uh, Kubernetes, there is a very simple leader election mechanism that can be, uh, if I remember, even used as part of the um, describing the job. So, or if not, it could be used by API using a sidecar or whatever. So we could make this leader election into this, this one-off uh, startup script so that every time you start, every pod search for a, uh, do, performs a leader election. So they have they acquire a distribute lock that is provided by ATCD itself. So it's nothing new to install on the database. And in this way, only one um, only one registry can run the migration. The other one will just be waiting or pass the lock so they are already operating. I mean, you should know better than me. So I'm just giving you this idea because maybe it's easy to implement and can give us the right way in a quick way. So my, con my concern is basically we're now trying to do something that's actually different. Um, yes, we're ensuring that only one person ever runs the migrations. However, we're now bolting on leader election on top of everything that's already in play. So now we have a difference in pattern behaviors between how the omnibus operates and how the CNG operates. Yes, my mind is 90% in the CNG and this is what we're working towards in, in gitlab.com, but we cannot alienate down the road. So I'm not against it and we can look into it. And as a future pattern, that may make more sense. But I think the pre-job makes the most sense for now because it's a known understood pattern that we can use in both worlds. So, and, and what about rollbacks? We have been discussing applying migrations um, I feel we like, I mean, uh, well, I mean, my initial thought is like, that's a future iteration, right? I think if we, um, I, I don't think we should 
well, I'd love to hear other people's thoughts. My personal feeling is I don't think we should assume we're going to be able to get rollbacks, um, but maybe others disagree. Yeah, even if we can, it, I, I don't think we will have something different than what we are planning for the Rails code base. And in that case, we will never run um, database migration. So when we roll back, we roll back code and we leverage the fact that the code, the data, the code, the code is backward compatible or the schema is forward compatible. So because most of the migration can be applied without downtime in one direction, but this is not true in reverse. So adding a columns makes no effort on things that are already running, but reverting it will break everything. I think this is probably a really good one where actually like the, what I don't think we'll be able to, or what I know we won't be able to just get in the first few iterations is automated deployments that give you rollbacks. Like we, we have to build up to that. And that will mean we are going to have to build out this QA uh, suite, like maybe bigger than we even ideally want it to end up being. Deployments will be slower initially, but safer. And then as we understand more about how these things work, we can spot opportunities to, to move this forward. So I would say that um, if we just, even if we just released once a week, but every week that was a perfect release, it will end up being faster than us attempting to do every day and, and getting stuck trying to roll back or, or fix issues. Uh, Jav, does that give you um, what you need then to be able to um, I, initially I think kind I, of put something together? I mean, I, I guess, first of all, um, is the goal to have this working in pre-prod next week? Is that is that what we're shooting for? Uh, are, we, are we blocking the development team right now by not having it working in pre-prod, just so I can kind of sense the priority here? If for us, uh, the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. I will and, that. try to make it as fast as possible. And is pre-prod the pri like what um, what does pre-prod give you that you don't have now? And also, what like how soon do we need to get this working and staging afterwards? So pre-prod gives us a more realistic environment. It's not running on our local sure. machines. Uh, so that's a, a big plus already, and uh, we can also start working on um, creating uh, metrics dashboards, um, uh -huh. right? As well, which we we can do, or it's not that easy to do if you're running things locally. So all of that, all of that, we can do it uh, while we prepare for staging and production. Okay, so so then it sounds like what we need to do is kind of do a hack where we're going to create a a one-off. Um, a job that's going to run migrations for the version that we're upgrading to, and um, I, you know, I, I guess I'm just not clear how long if this is going to be the permanent solution or whether this is going to be something that's going to change after we add this migration logic to charts. Okay, one thing that we have to look at is we are probably going to apply the import, the import procedure to the to the prior registry. So moving data from the bucket to the database, from what I've saw the last time, the prayer uh, bucket is really small. It's just like one gigabyte yeah. or something like that. In the, and the registry doesn't get any traffic at all. Um, right. so there should be any impact, which is also good because we can play with it and uh, not being worried about uh, what others are doing with it. And even if uh, there is other processes causing uh, a spike uh, on the database usage or something like that, at least it's more predictable. Uh, but we will have to do that. Uh, and probably that's not going to be automated in any way. So um, we'll have to run that command somewhere at some point before the deployment. Uh, yep. sounds, sounds good. Just a heads up um, for the staging environment, it will be more work to be done to get a database up because that will be a fully fledged Patoni cluster. And the data stores team I know is, is uh, fairly full with work already. So we need to see how we need to prioritize this. But if the pre prod database is unblocking you first, um, I think then we are good here. Yes, st staging for us is just to make sure that uh, 
we can test against something that's really similar to production. So we expect to run out any major issues during the tests on preprov. Um, so yeah, getting to staging will probably wait a, a bit more. Okay. And it sounds like if we do want to go with the charts uh, solution, then we should apply that when we go to staging, if we're going with a more realistic database as well. So keep pre as the, everything's kind of hacked together to unblock for development and testing and then uh, reassess. Cool, is there anything else anyone wants to discuss or any other questions or concerns? Awesome, sounds like we have a plan. So hopefully we'll get things moving on pre-prod uh, in the next week or so, depending on database and uh, QA suite and things like that. But uh, at least we have a good plan forwards. Where, where can we, <clears throat> gee, I've been typing and not talking. My voice doesn't want to get into this, this deal. Um, where's the best place to track that effort? Amy, I apologize, I'm coming in this late and maybe asking a dumb question, but I'm just wondering how I can track that work towards pre prod so that we can keep it yeah. on. I was actually going to uh, catch up with you, Daniel, actually on this one. Maybe it's uh, what we don't, I, what I haven't seen, um, I'm willing to put one together and we can coordinate on it is just a kind of an overall um, epic or something that's going to link all of these separate pieces. That's worked quite well for us on some of our other projects. So just something that uh, you can easily drop in on the database effort and the deployment issue. So I'll put something together, but maybe we could just sync up on what that, uh, what's the most useful stuff to have on that. Yeah, no worries. That sounds great. Thank you, Amy. Awesome. Great. Thanks so much for uh, joining everyone. This was uh, incredibly useful. Um, and uh, yeah, look forward to next steps. Just a quick point of order. I apologize. Uh, I've been trying to keep up with the notes in the document. You might want to scan that I actually mostly got that right and that I didn't write it down. So it was totally wrong. So some of this terminology is really hard to type at speed. So uh, I apologize if there's any sort of discrepancies there. <laughs> it looks great, I can fill in gaps, but thanks so much for doing that, Daniel. They're great notes. I'll put the I recording um, on the issue as well. Best. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, so I'll, I'll put the, once I've got an epic to kind of track this uh, cross team effort stuff, I'll put the recording on there as well. So we've got it all together. Awesome. And once again, thanks Hayley for reminding me to record. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your days. Bye.